Welcome to the Hyman Cast, a podcast of the Hyman Settlement School, where we explore the history, culture, and people that make the Hyman Settlement School what it is today, and how this historic institution will continue to serve its mission of celebrating heritage and changing lives in Central Appalachia. I'm Corey Terry, and I'm Jordan Collins. And welcome to episode number 18 of the Hyman Cast. We are trying to get ourselves back in a groove of this thing and continue to pump out our episodes every other week as we once did. But this summer's been pretty hectic and, and busy and we've we've got off yeah. track a couple of times. Basically the last three weeks have been nonstop, <laughs> nonstop <laughs> yeah. work. But yeah. that's good. That's yeah. good. Better than idle hands. I had lots of, uh, or we've had summer school going on all summer. Then we had writer's workshop going on and... I thought I thought that our meals was going to end after the writers' workshop, but they have continued. Uh, it's been great because we got reading core tutors. Thank yeah. you for that segue, Corey. Yeah. But we got uh, what is it? Thirty-two brand new tutors going to schools in Not Perry and Leslie County, and they're here all week getting trained and uh, ready to go out to them schools and help them kids. Yeah, show that fancy mug. <laughs> oh yeah, and uh, for our members who um, graduated from our program, let's see if I can find the camera. We have these <laughs> wonderful reading core mugs. They're insulated and vacuum sealed. So, right next to my Nacho Libre mug. Yeah, <laughs> Corey, he just wanted to flex his mug. That's yep, why. That's, for that's sure. what that was. <laughs> but uh, without further ado, we're gonna introduce our um, our guest, Miss Gail Young. Hello, Miss Gail. Thank you so much. <laughs> Thank you for having me. It's wonderful to have Miss Gail here, my neighbor from across the creek. Um, and if you will recall from episode four, I looked this up. It wasn't for oh. memory this time. I thought it was uh, episode three. We had her husband, Mr. Bob Young, on the podcast talking about Hyman history. And if you are familiar with Hyman, the settlement school, and anything to do with Hyman, you probably know Bob and Gail and uh, what a treat and treasure they are here for us at the settlement school. Local legends. Local legends. Um, yeah, we're, we're delighted to have you here with us today, Gail. Um, so you, you, you came over here today, we'll get into this a little bit later on, I guess, but you came over today to talk to our tutors this morning, right? That's correct, yeah. Yeah. So yeah, I think we're going to get that story later on, too, but uh, as always, Jordan, what do we want to do first? Oh, you know what we're going to start with, Corey, and that's the origin story. Yeah. Origin story. My voice cut out at the end there. And so. I'm excited, excited, Gail, because I've, I've known you for years now, but I don't feel like I've ever really got your, your origin story or like, you know... Of your background and that sort of thing. So yeah. I'm, I'm interested to hear and, and you, excited. You might remember uh, that Bob and I were married in 2000. Bob and I were college friends, and I lost my husband, the father of my children, in 1997, and then uh, came to Heinemann, married to Bob Young, who is indeed a Heinemann legend and a historian. Uh, but my roots go back to Clay County, Kentucky, oh. and uh, I was raised on Bullskin Creek. Uh, went to Oneida Baptist Institute hmm. for my high school uh, training, and from there I went to Cumberland College, uh, majored in education, and then was married to Tommy Russell Walters, and we moved to Florida where uh, I raised my children and had my career of teaching in Florida in uh, elementary and middle schools. So I'm not uh, a complete stranger here. I still speak the mountain language, (laughs) and uh, it's like coming home for me because uh, many of the things that I grew up with that were uh, important to me are important to our friends here in Heinemann and around Knott County. Over, you said you lived over in uh, in Clay County for a period of time. Is that I, I was raised in Clay County on Bullskin Creek, which runs from, uh, I guess, Size Rock, uh, Kentucky, down to okay. Oneida, where it joins the South Fork of the Kentucky River. Okay. And uh, Oneida's one of those towns, much like Heinemann, that when the big floods came, mm. Oneida was covered up mm. numerous times, and uh, like Heinemann was when there were major floods here. So 
a lot of similarities in uh, living in Clay County and coming to Knott County to be a resident here. Did you did you know any Collinses in Clay County? Oh yes, we know Collinses. <laughs> Went to school with Collinses and yeah. And I know where you come from at yeah. the head of the creek. On on behalf of the Clay County Collinses, I'm sorry. <laughs> oh no, don't ever apologize. No, no, because uh, part of you of who you are has a lot to do with your uh, your name and your family and uh, how that family has made you who you are. True. So be be very proud that you're a Collins. Yeah, I mean, I am, just not of that side of my family. Oh, <laughs> you yes. know, so okay, I mean, all right, okay. Very so. proud of the Leslie County roots, though. Oh, yeah, yeah. Leslie County, strong, Yeah, up from Thousand Sticks all from day thousand long. Thousand Sticks. Yeah. So, I guess you, you mentioned it a little bit, um, maybe you married Bob, but how did you um, find your way here to Hyman and to the settlement school? You taught uh, with the Earth Dyslexia program for a while at some point, didn't you? When, uh, when Bob and I were married in 2000, uh, Bob and I, by the way, were college friends. We um, worked together with the music department. He was uh, training to be a church organist and pianist, and uh, we both sang in the college choir and traveled with the college choir. And that, um, that experience was like sports teams Because when you work in the same uh, program that other people work in and you have the same interest and you share those long bus trips to go to 23 churches in two weeks and and you have those wonderful things that you experience, it really forms friendships and alliances that are lifetime. Uh, So that was part of how... Bob and I got together and became friends and stayed friends all those years. Um, But then when I had retired from teaching in Florida uh, when Bob and I were married, and uh, I was not ready to give up my role as a teacher, as a helper. So fortunately, there was an opening in the full-time school James Steele Learning Center School for the Children with Features of Dyslexia. And I felt greatly honored to be able to work at the full-time school. So the last uh, three or four years that Heinemann Settlement School had the full-time day students, I was one of the teachers. And so from that, um, that gave me an inside view of what Heinemann Settlement School is all about. And, of course, Bob has always been uh, a part of the Heinemann Settlement School culture and history and, and activities. So it was a natural thing for me to just fall in with him and uh, be a part of the Heinemann Settlement School family because that's what we are at Heinemann Settlement School. We're a family, and we... Uh, care for each other and take care of each other and look out for each other. So um, the, the dyslexic program became very, very important to me. Later, uh, while, while I was here, because um, one of my grandsons was uh, having great difficulty with school, academic chores, and uh, we learned that he was ready for third grade and couldn't read. So I said to my son, bring him to Heinemann. And we brought him up and screened him and uh, made a plan for his education here for three summers. And uh, that just sealed the deal with me, and I will always be so grateful for what Ryan was able to accomplish and what he received through the dyslexic program because Ryan is now a college graduate and works as a golf course management and designer and uh, has a very impressive job and loves his job 
and stands in great appreciation of what he received here at the settlement school during summer, three summer sessions of school. I mean, we'd love to hear that. You know, we, there's several people who have benefited from our program, but you know, it's, we haven't done a great job of keeping up with those people. So it's good that you, you know, you kind of brought that to light, Gail, that Mm -hmm. we have someone in our, who was in our program, who's, um, excelling and loving their job and yeah. i'd imagine has a love for education as well right, right. i mean yes and uh, i think you, that'd be a good podcast interview in the future oh yeah you know it you, can you hook us up gail can you sure get us? we oh, can yeah. do that there we go we can do that and you're uh you still tutor in the summers don't you sometimes i, I help with screening when we um uh look at students for admission to any of the programs after school program or any of the programs We screen those students to try to identify what their learning differences might be Mm -hmm. and what their greatest academic need is. And I I just am so proud to be able to help with that program. Plus, it's a great day, the days that we do screenings, Mm -hmm. because the screeners all come together and everybody works uh, until we're finished and then we have a potluck luncheon. Oh, yeah. And uh, share our experiences that day with working with the different children who come to be screened. I think, I mean, I actually got in on the screening this past year because Ola's like, I couldn't, I can't find anybody. So I was doing that that picture identification. And that's. Oh, you did the Peabody nonverbal. Yeah, that's what I was doing. Yeah. And I was just, I don't know. It's, I mean, it's, it. you know, there's a lot of pressure, you know, because you want right. to do it right. You want to make sure that kid right. is like. You know, they have the right scores and all that. So, I mean, it's it's not easy work, but it is rewarding work. So it's, it's very rewarding work. Yeah. Very rewarding. So, it's just, it's just nice to be a part of that. I, You know, I, I, at first I was hesitant because I, I hear Ola always like, you know, about the about the screening. She's just the Peabody, <laughs> exhausted. The Peabody nonverbal um, instrument is, uh, I think, one of the, one of the easier things to do with the students when they come to be screened, and it's one of the more enjoyable things yeah. because uh, they don't have to know a word. They You give them a clue about which picture of four mm-hmm. uh, matches what, uh, what, they're, what you want them to show you, yeah. and they choose the correct picture. And it's on all color, and it's on the computer, yeah. and... Uh, that makes it exciting for the students. Students love to work on the computer yeah. skills, so <laughs> that's good. Well, I'm proud, yeah, Jordan, that was, you were able to do that. It was maybe, nice. It was maybe nice. We'll, did they serve you lunch? Yeah, I got some pizza on the way back. <laughs> so. But well, my, my favorite part, though, was this one kid. He was like, he would go through the words. He'd be like, oh, that's easy. He's like, I got that one. <laughs> God, I'm just like, he was almost frustrated with me. He's like, this is too easy. And yeah. I was like, uh, gotta gotta do it, buddy. You gotta yeah. gotta work through it. Uh, so I'm gonna. We have a hard. We do hard transitions here, Gail. Well, I, had a que- I had a question. Oh, Corey's gonna do the hard trans. So never. Let's make it even harder transition. All back. right, let's hit it. Uh, but I was just thinking, you came here and shared your story um, of your grandson to the tutors today, and I guess was there anything else that you share with him, or kind of like, um, how do you see their role? Um, now with the expansion of the Reading Corps program that we have going on here and what benefit does that bring to our community and the dyslexia program? That's a very important question and a very good question. (laughs) Uh, I always hear that comment when uh, people are being interviewed, but that is indeed an excellent question. Um, I think the most important aspect of what the Reading Corps is going to be doing is they're going to unlock a world of knowledge for students whose world of knowledge has not been unlocked heretofore. Uh, All of us learn differently. All of us uh, have a strong learning suit. We either learn orally we, with our ears, and that's our strong suit, or we learn with our eyes in reading and seeing it, or we learn other ways of we hear it, 
Uh, we see it. And so everybody has a different learning modality. And part of identifying a learning difference in a student will involve one of those le- learning modes. Mm-hmm. Um, and I think our tutors are going to be able to identify that pretty soon. Uh, they're being trained to be aware of whether that strong suit is, you know, being able to hear it or being able to see it, being able, to, you know, to mm-hmm. see, have it in a different form. And then the other thing that the students uh, who are going, the tutors will be looking at will be that uh, children with features of dyslexia see the world differently. They handle the world differently. And uh, their working, academic working skills will need to be addressed differently. Mm -hmm. And they're going to open the whole world to these students who have these learning differences. Uh, They'll be able to help these children move forward in being able to learn, to being able to do the things that their classmates are doing. Mm -hmm. Uh, So the program, the highlight for me is that the program is going to just simply open up the minds of children who really want to learn and want to be successful and after all don't we all want to be successful yeah that's that's definitely a for sure here i'm always trying to gauge myself on my own successes but (laughs) (laughs) but yeah i mean that's that's probably my favorite part about the program too it's like as soon as those kids get it you know and then they it's a real love i mean they just have a passion for it after that after they actually like have the tools that they need so it's just it's just nice i mean it's nice to be a part of that and Another aspect of uh, having a learning difference or different mode is uh, that when students are with other students who have these same difficulties, Mm -hmm. it opens up an understanding about themselves Mm -hmm. that they might not have had before. Mm -hmm. And now they see, well, I'm not, you know, I'm not different. I'm not odd. Uh, I'm not a dummy. I'm just different, yeah. and uh, seeing other students who who have that have a difference is encouraging and uh, mind awakening for students who have have that difference. And I think that's one thing that happened with the uh, summer school programs is that suddenly uh, the students who come for the summer school program, well, look. These other guys are having the same difficulty that I am. Mm -hmm. Uh, This kid is as big as me and probably as old as me, and he's having difficulty with the same learning uh, things that I'm having difficulty with. Mm -hmm. So I'm not, I'm not. Alone. I'm not alone in this. Yeah. I mean, it is nice because they form like a real quick community. These kids, they come in the first day, you know, they're reserved, quiet. They probably felt like an outcast a lot of the time. But then that that fifth week, they're always out of their shell, communicating, having fun with all the other kids. So that's, I love that. And yes, Jordan, that's a wonderful point because uh, one of the things I remember about my grandson, Ryan, being here, uh, he made friends with, Uh, other students and the day of the awards ceremony at the end of the summer school uh, all everybody was getting some sort of an award Mm -hmm. that's part of the program and uh, the higher the award the longer you wait for it because they the low awards lower awards Mm -hmm. then the medium awards and then the high ones (laughs) And he and a young man from over at London area, Mr. House, um, was uh, in their group, in their skill group. Neither of them had been called. Neither of them had received an award yet. And everybody else was getting an award. And the two boys were sitting by each other. And they would look at each other. They would watch and they'd listen. And the last two was, the f- next to the last one was called. 
and the house boy received that award. And he went for his award, and he and Zachary, he and Ryan, not Zachary, he and Ryan both had tears streaming down their faces, you know, and they're 12-year-old boys, and what 12-year-old boy (laughs) cries in public? But both of those kids were sitting there, and they were so happy for each other because Mr. House got the second highest award that year, and Ryan got the highest award. And there wasn't any, it wasn't like they were envious of each other. It was just that they were so proud of each other and and shared the joy of of the award that they received. I never, I just never forgotten how that, uh, how that looked to see those two kids uh, sharing the excitement and sharing the love of of what they had accomplished that summer. God, Gail, you got me, got my eyes watering. You got me <laughs> crying the podcast in front of everyone. You got to hit me with that tearjerker right out the gate. <laughs> I'm man. sorry. No, it's it's all good. So Beautiful. I'm going to get to our our uh, our transition so I cannot cry all over the place <laughs> right now. So I'm uh, you recently got of a. Uh, Got an award this weekend, didn't you, Gail? I did. And uh, did. that award was for the Woman of the Year. For 2020. Yeah, so... Not how, County Civic Night for context. Civic Night. Yeah, Gingerbread, for, yeah. Yeah. So how did how does one become Woman of the Year? Gail? I wish I knew. <laughs> um, I, it, it, with great humility, uh, it's, a, it's a very humbling thing to be named in this community uh, Woman of the Year for uh, Civic Night. Uh, I'm not sure how I became Woman of the Year. Uh, it was a great honor, is a great honor. I have a beautiful plaque. Uh, there were, was a lot of secrecy surrounding the selection. Uh, I knew that something was happening, but I was not sure. Uh, we had guests from out of town. I was told uh, early on that um, Bob and I had to come back early from North Carolina, where we normally spend all of July. So how you become Woman of the Year, I'm not sure, but I'm greatly honored, okay. and I'm, I'm very humble uh, about it because... The humbling thing about it is I know so many very special ladies, and I say ladies with the greatest admiration, so many accomplished ladies in this community. Mm -hmm. Um, So, yes, it was a great honor, and I'm, I'm pleased, maybe a little embarrassed, But, uh, yes, it was a great honor, and I'm proud. Okay. Well, you know, Gail, you're humble, but I'm not. So I, <laughs> I will say that Gail definitely deserved that award. She's I think so. Always, she's an integral part of the community, and that's that's why you got the award, in case you were wondering. So Thank yeah. you. You made me cry, so I'm going to try to make you cry. <laughs> Thank but, you, George. Yeah. I know my kids certainly think you're a special lady. Uh, they, they always get excited when Miss Gail brings them some sort of uh, – gift usually in the form of cookie dough or something of that sort or comes over reads books to them and does all kinds of little little things with them so i need to get on that it's, list. it's things like that that make you the woman of the year the the, the special things that people don't really see but, it's the little things yeah it's always the little things yeah you, you make you make our community home make it great but in addition to woman of the year so i'm setting Corey up oh okay uh, so you are also, Gail, a member of the Daughters of the American Revolution. I am. And we're the regent of the Troublesome Creek chapter here in Hindman. Uh, so can you tell us a little bit about how you became a member of the DAR and kind of your role in it? The Troublesome Creek chapter of the National Society for the Daughters of the American Revolution uh, was formed in 1976 an important year in history, and um, was an incredible DAR chapter. They did wonderful things uh, around the community, recognizing Revolutionary War soldiers, uh, taking um, 
flags to cemeteries. Uh, DAR does a commemorative thing with uh, Revolutionary War soldier graves. They mark them with a plaque, and uh, they have a ceremony that honors that. And that, the Troublesome Creek chapter of the of the National Society of Daughters of the American Revolution was very active and very important uh, for many, many years uh, in Heinemann. And as happens in groups of um, community groups, uh, people died, people uh, left the, the area, and um, this chapter kind of died almost. Uh, many, several women were still paying their dues, but the chapter was not meeting, and uh, there was no communication. The only communication was, you need to pay your dues, and we get those done. But that kept the chapter alive. Mm -hmm. So when I came, and through my work at the full-time school, I began to realize that, hey, DAR is very prominent in their support of the Heinemann Settlement School. And we need to be sure that when chapters from other areas come to visit, that they know that Knott County has an active chapter of the DAR. So, with the help of several other people, and at that time, State Regent Leslie Miller, we were able to rebirth the Troublesome Creek chapter. And we, I was elected regent and served uh, probably illegally for too many years, <laughs> but when you're reorganizing, sometimes... Um, you don't have officers and you don't, you know, it involves a whole lot of things. So we got the chapter going again, and the chapter is active. As of tonight, we have our first meeting post-COVID. Oh. So uh, we're excited to be able to get back together and to get back about our work of uh, supporting the school and the many other things that the DAR does uh, nationally. So we're proud members of the National Society of Daughters of the American Revolution. So what do, you, do you have anything on the pipeline that you're going to discuss? Uh, or can we not know that yet? I don't uh, we, we, one of the things, we're going to meet our new executive director tonight at our meeting. Okay. And then the next project that we have uh, is the 27th when there will be a meet and, and greet, community meet and greet for our new director, Will Anderson. Okay. Uh, our chapter will help meet and greet that <laughs> afternoon. Yeah. And then we'll also help uh, provide finger food and things for that, uh, that occasion That's on on the twenty seventh. So if um, if Jordan wanted to, you know, swing by for some finger food, would that be? You'd or? be you'd be by. You get something. You get something. That's what I love to hear, Gail. I think it's I also probably on your calendar to be here that night. It probably is. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just trying to it's take it. A, I'm trying to take it a day at a time, Corey. It's it's, it's yeah. a full week. So yeah. You're a daughter of the American Revolution, and I know a little bit about that. I know that you have to connect to uh, uh, someone who served in a revolution in some right. way or another. So um, who was your ancestor who fought, Gail? My ancestor was um, Robert Burns. And a, a real interesting thing about him is uh, that he played the fife in a band, and that was part of his military service. I found that most intriguing. Uh, and then I have a nephew, my sister's son, who he and his son are both members of the Sons of the American Revolution, and they both play in a, 
uh, fife and drum band in Louisville. Uh, so it's interesting that their ancestor uh, came fifing along, yeah. and now they do the same thing. Kind so. of picked up the baton. Yeah. And, and you know, we discussed this a little bit beforehand, but, you know, I didn't know. So what what is a fife for the uh, audience? It's a kind of pipe, a kind of um, little horn that, okay. um, yeah. Yeah. So. And you'll see pictures of the American Revolution uh, and you see the, um, you'll see them holding their fife and playing as they march along. Okay. Okay. So you also do you help people find their um, revolutionary ancestor too? I know before we come over here, you were trying to get, you were you were trying to sign Sarah Kate up to <laughs> see what her interest was. Yes, uh, requirements for um, membership. You must have a direct bloodline. You must follow uh, genealogically. You have to follow a direct bloodline. And we have historians, and we have uh, one of the positions in the chapters is uh, registrar, and that person's job is to help with applications. Uh, Our most recent member is uh, Lois Weinberg, and she will not be able to be at our meeting tonight. We were hoping that she would be at our meeting tonight so we could uh, honor her. Uh, but she'll be here on the 27th to help us with finger food. <laughs> okay. So, uh, yeah, we, uh, the, the process is actually uh, quite simple. You f- have someone in your family, hopefully, who is a genealogist or a friend, and uh, you prove who you are, and then you prove who your uh, ancestors are. Each step of that bloodline back to that person who is uh, was a Revolutionary War soldier. And uh, some of the names here uh, uh, have been interesting because several people, Childers is a it Combs. Uh, of course, Lois Combs was is the daughter of the former uh, governor of the state, uh, and uh, so her ancestor is a Combs, and uh, and she and I have a. It's interesting how lines uh, cross over or meet as you progress from your family, your position in the in the lineup of a genealogical. Uh, map and so at some point uh, Lois and I both share uh, an ancestor a Combs ancestor Mm -hmm. so it's interesting how sometimes those things overlap and and especially in a tight community Mm -hmm. so Lois's uh, roots go back to Clay County and uh, where Governor Combs was raised uh, her father and um, so my connection to the Combs is the same as Lois's connections to her Comb ancestry. But uh, we, we prepare that. Uh, registrar prepares that map or chart, and then we submit that to Washington, and they're very careful to be sure that your ancestor is certifiable that you have everything in order that you're able to prove who that person is or was and you prove the relationship so not only do you become an honored member of the dar you find out who you really are (laughs) yeah i mean i i did i'm i'm not in the sar i'm sure you or bob could definitely help me with that we need to get on that yeah. Are you in the SAR? I'm not, but I said we need to get on there. Oh, yeah, eventually, yeah. yeah. But I, I did some uh, some digging because, you know, like you said, I wanted to figure out who I was. And uh, I found out that me and Josh actually share a common ancestor. So it's uh, it was, uh, I think it was a girl named Amanda Mullins and <laughs> in like 1830 or something like that. So it was just, it's interesting, like you said, how people cross over and kind of meet yeah. at these points. How wonderful. Yeah. Oh, Bob would be delighted. He'll put you boys in, 
in good shape. Oh, yeah. yeah. I, I, my grandfather got our genealogy pretty pretty well done. I don't, I don't know if it goes all the way back to Revolutionary War, but I know there was a guy, you said Childers, it, a guy named Abraham. It says Abraham Childress on there. And I'm like, I bet that's Childers, oh. <laughs> but I'm not yeah. sure. But, uh, yeah, th- I, I'm a, I mean, my other side of my family is Smith, so I feel like that's going to be pretty easy to find. A my Uncle Bobby is a Smith. There we go. We're related. Yeah, see? <laughs> I knew we were broskies, Corey. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Down the line somewhere. Yeah, somewhere. Somewhere. All right, so we got the DAR scoop. Um, so what does uh, Miss Gail do in her spare time? Gosh, what spare time? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you're, you're busy this week, aren't you? We've been busy. Today, the, today's been a busy day, and it's a busy week. But uh, uh, I like to read. I like to read. I love to entertain. Uh, I like to play with children. So... Uh, and I'm very uh, enamored with my two great grandchildren, so I love to find things to send to them, and I love to do FaceTime with them on the phone. Little uh, uh, Chase Britton Walters has learned to say "great grand," <laughs> and uh, so that's such a that is such a heart tug for me that he and Emery Kate can talk to me on the phone and they recognize who I am, which is interesting. Uh, that children, I mean, for my lifetime, all of the technology that has happened has uh, has really, you've come a long way, baby, let's just say it that <laughs> way. Uh, so to have great-grandchildren who uh, talk to me on FaceTime and recognize who i am that's revolutionary so uh, i mean that happened keep up with each other from other states like in all the over ni- the world I, I mean the 90s the internet came came to fruition and then now we've got yeah. like you know, twitter and now we got facetime and it's just a lot's happened in my lifetime did you, you know, say, did yeah. you say that you remember dial up internet oh yeah okay just make oh, sure yeah. i couldn't remember if you or you made the cut off there. down in thousand sticks we were a little bit you slow probably, you probably yeah you probably had dial up there to like it was like in. <laughs> it was, it was well, when you when you consider uh, your comment about uh, your your line and Josh's line mm-hmm. uh, crossing mm-hmm. and meeting up, like my line and Lois Weinberg's Lois Combs Weinberg's mm-hmm. line, uh, we're we're here in East Kentucky. Our communities are tight mm-hmm. and geographically uh his and historically little communities where did you go to get married not very far no. uh so uh and i'm not talking about 60 years ago i'm talking about 100 years yeah. ago yeah. so we'll find a lot of those connections that yeah. maybe even like you you're not aware of and but delighted when you find that you have a connection to somebody else I can't wait till I figure out I'm related to Corey. I'm gonna be, <laughs> you can be an honorary Collins, Corey. Uh, I don't know if I have any Leslie County or uh, Clay County connections. Oh, you'll have it. Don't worry. <laughs> but that's just across the hill. Yeah. That's true. That's true. Maybe you had some migration out. Maybe. I don't know. I feel like all my, well, I mean, my Terry side of my family, they lived in uh, Chicago for a long time. Um, so I haven't really explored that side to know. What that connection's like, but what are you doing in Chicago, Corey? I don't know. I didn't live there. I've never been there. Your bloodline was. <laughs> you so you think your family might have gone there for work or for? Uh, yeah, I think so. I can't really remember or r- remember when they moved back here. They lived in Mousy. Um, I think that's where all the Terrys okay. mostly lived. <laughs> but, yeah, but uh, here comes another hard transition. So what was your uh, proudest moment, Gail? I guess my children and grandchildren uh, have great, great influence of joy in my life and pride. Um, I have two sons. Both have given me grandchildren. 
I have a daughter uh, who is not married, but uh, she is a nurse, a very special nurse. Um, the boys, uh, John is a super salesperson, works with a firm of tele- telecommunication equipment, okay. uh, products, and uh, repair. And then my oldest son, Anthony, who lives in Thomasville, Georgia, father of Ryan. Okay. Uh, he works, he lives in Thomasville, Georgia, which is uh, geographically right on the Florida Georgia line. And he uh, drives over into, Georgia, into from Georgia into Florida to work for the Florida State Transportation Engineering Department uh, in road building. And his office is west of Tallahassee. Oh. Yeah. Nice. One of the things uh, from my teaching career um, that I was so very, very proud of, took great pride in a program that I developed for uh, sixth graders in the county where I taught, uh, our school would have usually 10 units of sixth grade classes, 10 sixth grade classes a year. And I designed an educational program of uh, ecology where we went outside to a local state park and uh, saw snakes and uh, looked at uh, drops of water on under a microscope and uh, did soil horizons. So we planted local grass uh, did nature walks and outdoor things, but within the scope of the core of skills. And then um, started that program just for my own school. And then the county adopted the program, the one-day ecology uh, environmental program. Uh, the county adopted it and supported it, and all the sixth grade classes in our county were able to participate in that, that at their own time. And uh, so shared that program with the state middle school conference and had a young lady come up to me at the end of the workshop, and she said, I just wondered... Where in East Tennessee did you come from? So when we come from this area, people always recognize that by the way we talk. Mm -hmm. So that was a great lesson to me, to have somebody recognize me when I, at my proudest moment by the way I talked. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, and you, and you wonder why you're the woman of the year, Gail. I mean, I... I <laughs> I would have loved to have an ecology pro program in Leslie County because that's, I love nature. That's my favorite. I mean, I just love going outside, seeing the birds and the trees. And Didn't you also do favorite. something with the Challenger Center? I worked, I helped with the Challenger Center, uh, and uh, that has been a, a great joy for me to be able to work with children who come just for the day. They come to the Challenger Center, and we do a program for them. They fly a mission or they go to Mars or uh, they look for a comet and uh, the different levels uh, have different programs and the Challenger Center is a great asset mm -hmm. to teachers in this area because they can bring their classes and uh, the programs all line up with the core of skills which is important to teachers because teachers need to be aware and check those those skills off so certain things that uh, the Challenger Center does line up with the core of skills, Kentucky core of skills, and uh, but the students come and have a good time and don't know that they're learning. <laughs> so that's always a good thing. Yeah, I remember doing that, and yeah. I was like the commander of the mission to Mars. And I was, oh, that was kind of a big thing for me because I was a quiet kid and, and kind of shy, but I had to lead. And then you know? became a complete dictator on the spot. Yeah, you? I guess so. <laughs> Move that and up. No. That was a big day for me. I, I like. And you it. got as commander, you got to wear earphones. Yeah. Ear, yeah. Yeah, like this. 
Yeah, I, I was. Well, uh, I like this so much. I remember um, my favorite part of that entire trip was by far the the dry, the freeze dried ice cream. That was my favorite. But, oh, you must have gone to summer camp. Uh, no, it was actually just for the day. So we oh. we went through uh, we went through that. And uh, what's funny is I was actually the the calm guy for that mission, and now I'm the oh. calm guy here. So <laughs> did the challenge. So Center. look where you got your start. Yeah, my, at, the, yeah. at the hazard challenge yeah. Center. Yeah. But, uh, all right, so we're going to do the lightning round, and here it is. Wait, wait, wait. Oh, oh. Failed. Corey got I me my I, sounds. I knew I would fail. Corey got me my sounds. We're going to hit them. Jiggle, 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 jiggle. That's oh. the, wrong, <laughs> <laughs> it's the wrong sound, Corey. It's that sound. All right, here we go. <laughs> I'll have to do a hard edit on that one. I love that. <laughs> no, no, keep the jiggle in there. That's... That's the best. I don't even know what that was about. I, I don't either. It was when we were playing with this. Yeah, we just said random things. But record. you're you're starting this lightning round off, so hit it, Corey. All right, Gail. What is your favorite meal? Oh, gee. Breakfast. Breakfast would be my favorite meal. I think you make a good breakfast, like, like a breakfast casserole, don't you? I feel like I've I had that I do a house. breakfast casserole. I think I've had that before. You probably have. I bet you have. <laughs> and ham biscuits. Uh, what country, kind of biscuits? Country ham biscuits. Oh, ham biscuits. Now, see. Yeah. yeah, that's always a big hit. And uh, yeah, for sure. I love breakfast. I like to uh, cook breakfast. I uh, I used to make a really mean biscuit, really a good biscuit. I dropped away from that, and because uh, it's important. Uh, to keep your practice up. Uh, making biscuits is like making hot rolls or loaves of bread. Yeah. And uh, you learn to feel the dough and the personality of the dough comes out in the way it feels. Pie crust has a feel. You, you get that uh, yeah. feel of the texture and, and you know whether it's going to be good or not, but yeah. Breakfast is my favorite meal, and biscuits is a big part of that. And, of course, all of us here in East Kentucky, we love gravy. But, unfortunately, the world has discovered gravy and biscuits. <laughs> and uh, and my growing up, that would have been a very foreign thing to think about gravy and biscuits being at the level of consumption they are now. That would have... Been a, a real interesting Appalachian thing. Appalachian food is taking over the world. It should. We deserve that. Yeah. That's we, right. that. we make good stuff. Absolutely. <laughs> Absolutely. I, I'm trying to, I haven't made biscuits in a while because I generally don't need to eat biscuits every weekend like I would like, but I'm trying to perfect my biscuit making, but I, f- I feel like I'm getting pretty good at it. I mean, the way it's texture. Talk. It's texture. Yeah. And and I think a lot of people, you know, a lot of people are very committed to one brand of flour. Yep. Uh, and and that does make a difference, uh, really and truly, it does. Um, I like the King Arthur, or I can do some White Lily. Yeah, I've, I'm <laughs> using White Lily right now. That's what I'm using now. I notice, like, like I make sourdough bread, but whenever I've like tried to make just commercial yeast bread, like I don't. It feels so weird. Like I cannot figure out what to do. It's there's such a difference there between those two. I don't usually cook, but the way you two are talking about it, it sounds like you're making a fine piece of pottery. <laughs> just like the feel of it, it kind of the is. personality. Yeah. It's just yeah. I wish I had that that much artistic ability. But yeah, commercial yeast bread is just a it's a different animal. It's, it happens very quickly. Sourdough takes a long time, so it's like okay, I'm okay. I'm still okay. Figure this out. I got time, but no. that's why I do kombucha. It takes a long time. <laughs> yeah, a long time. It's true. And uh, oh yeah, I was going to mention also that uh, many people may not know that Bob and Gail let us use their the land for our garden here that we we raise our produce on on campus. So we have a beautiful garden over there on their land, and you had some beans this week, I think, when you got back from over there. How were they? I found the beans in the bo- in the garden and. Oh, they're lovely, and so Bob was hungry for Kentucky beans, so I went down and found that there were beautiful, beautiful rows of beans 
with an arch connecting the two <laughs> rows. And I stood under the arch at the end of the two rows of beans and picked a mess. A mess is enough <laughs> for your family to eat at a meal. So I picked a mess of green beans out of the settlement school's garden in Bob's backyard. Yeah. It's it's very nice having the arch, and you don't have to like bend over to pick the beans. You just, just pull them from the top. It is yeah. quite immaculate. It's a back saver. I've I only seen it. pictures, but it it, it you should looks go over there phenomenal. sometime. I might. I might pick some beans. Pick oh, you a mess. You know, I'll pick me a mess. Yeah. Me, me and my lady. Yeah. But uh, we're gonna hit you on that next uh, lightning round question. What's your favorite color, Gail? I'm sorry. What's your favorite color? My favorite color is blue. I think. Okay. I think I agree. Yeah. I'm a, agree. I'm a green guy. I like a good green. <laughs> green. See, that's the thing about the lightning round question. Sometimes you don't got to go in deep with them. They're just quick answers, which is yeah. what I enjoy. I'm surprised you didn't ask for like some sort of like uh, philosophic answer to like, why do you like blue? Oh, hold up. It's coming. <laughs> so here's our next one. So if you were to be any type of vegetable, what type of vegetable would you be and why? <laughs> My word. My word, goodness. <laughs> Lightning round. I think, um, oh dear, okra stingy. So I don't want to be okra. Say Maybe stingy. tomatoes. Tomato? Yeah, I like that. I Tomato? Like that. Yeah. What about you, Corey? You, I know you're not a fan of tomatoes, so what's Corey going to be? Uh, I mean, in terms of what I like. No, I mean. Wh- I don't know. I, I don't I, I don't have answers to these questions that you have. You had them beforehand. Gail didn't. She had it. I she feel like it. I want to say sweet corn because it's bright, delicious, but I don't think that describes me at all. You know what? You, go, you <laughs> do you, Corey. That's your, that's, that's who you. I'd be I'd be a hot pepper because I'm spicy. <laughs> that's, that's 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 good. That's solid. That's yeah. a good one, Jordan. Yeah, yeah spicy. <laughs> I think I'd be broccoli because like broccoli is like the vegetable that is like like in the movies and stuff. It's like that's the that's the vegetable that you that gets pointed out. It's like nobody likes that vegetable. <laughs> no, Corey. I like broccoli. <laughs> you're good. I like broccoli. I love broccoli. But yeah, put some cheese on you. You're great. Yeah. You're great. Who was the president? That didn't eat broccoli. Oh, Gail I, I feel you. like Jordan would probably know this because he's full of facts okay. like that. So it has to be a more recent president, right? Yes. Yeah. Um, Jimmy Let Carter. the audience decide. Yeah, I'm. I'm gonna. Uh, I'm gonna throw out an answer, and you tell me after we're done, and we'll let the audience guess on the podcast. Uh, Lyndon B. Johnson. Okay. More recent than that. I oh, it's I said Jimmy recent. Carter. Is that right? Is that right? Is that right? I, f- I mean, he's, no, he's, he's the peanut guy, so I don't see him liking, I don't know, who knows? He doesn't like broccoli? I don't know. Or he does like broccoli? Gail, threw, Gail hit me hard with this uh, with his question here. I don't, I don't know that one. We'll Google it. Yeah, we'll, we'll hit it, it afterwards. All right. What is your favorite thing about Hyman? Not necessarily settlement school, but Hyman in general, I guess. Oh, but Hyman Settlement School is my favorite <laughs> thing about. We love yeah. that answer. Yeah, that's what we was looking for. But, you know, since I've been here, before you guys were here, the Artisan Center has blossomed and grown, and things have happened at the settlement school that are wonderful, wonderful growth things. And then the Luthery and just... Even though downtown, uh, as so many little towns in the area uh, have experienced, the downtown doesn't have a restaurant, doesn't have a drugstore, but it's still downtown. Mm -hmm. And uh, different things, downtown Heinemann has taken on a different personality, but these wonderful things that have happened since I've been here uh, are so encouraging and so beneficial to the community and uh, so beneficial to 
uh, the reputation of Hanman, Kentucky. Uh, I just uh, emailed and exchanged some information with a young lady who grew up with my children. She lives in Texas. She's an accomplished musician, and she has a music company called Menda. It's her first name, Menda. Menda's Music. And uh, in corresponding with her uh, on email and Facebook, she's interested in coming to check out the Luthery. So because her, her music store uh, sells instruments, and uh, so that was an exciting thing for me to be, just have that little experience of saying, hey, Menda, <laughs> in Heinemann, Settle, Heinemann, Kentucky, there's a, a luthery, and they're making marvelous instruments. And so now she's interested in coming here, mm-hmm. so... There's actually just, I was, me and Liz were out for a walk last night and there was a car pull in. They started driving our way. I was like, I bet they need directions. Yeah. And they, they stopped and they asked, where's the, where's the instrument company at? And I was like, it's right there. You know? <laughs> so they were looking for the instrument company. I think they were from Delaware. So that's, oh, I found that pretty amazing. Just it's people funny, coming from all over. It's funny you mentioned that because I just actually, when I went down to get my cup in the office, some guy walked into the office, he says, uh, do you know where they make the, the instruments at? And I'm like, oh, are you looking for the Kentucky School of Craft? He goes, yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> I said, that way. Yeah. <laughs> so yeah. Must have something going on today. Cause I guess there's just, there's yeah. a lot of people looking for them. So. They were looking for housing, and I was like, if I had any idea of what to do to get you into our housing, I yeah. would do that. But Rita is gone. Yeah, so. Rita is our, is our our chief of that. So. <laughs> yeah. so. I think they went and stayed in Hazard. Yeah, so, right, so that. great things happening in Hyman. I wish I see the old pictures of downtown Hyman. Vaguely remember downtown Hyman back when there was things there. I remember when Yoder's was downtown and the old bridge and all that stuff, but I don't remember much beyond that. I miss Yoder's being downtown, though. Those, you don't those remember things. the drugstore with the lunch counter? Oh, yeah, 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 I remember that, too, yeah. Uh, yeah, I actually saw some old pictures of that the other day, too. And I'm like, actually, it was at Writer's Workshop. They posted on the Writer's Workshop page and... They used to go down there, I guess, during that and get some food. And I was like, I wish we still had that. The, the current Heinemann is what I know of Heinemann. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah. Yeah. I think it's great, though. So, yeah. All righty. All so. right, Gail. We thank you so much for coming on to the podcast today and enjoyed this conversation with you. And uh, any any final parting words? Thank you for having me. <laughs> All right. We'll let you get to your to your evening. You got a big evening of Troublesome Creek DAR meetings happening. So thank you so much for coming on. You're welcome. The treble's busting my eardrums. <laughs> yeah. Mm. All right. And with that, Gail has left the building. Let's let's end this bad boy. Yeah. Time to get to some announcements and donor recognition. And Sarah Kate has just straight up hooked us up with the announcements this week. Oh, yeah. She's been hooking up the Facebook on the announcements, too. I love that. She's got, like, everything Sarah Kate does is now, like... On the Facebook page. Uh, no, it's, like, a night every month. It's, like, it's events every month now. Which is great. I just wish... Yoga night. Every, <laughs> everything night. All right. Start let's us off, Jordan. Oh, yeah. I'm starting, ain't I? All righty. So we have uh, Tuesdays on Troublesome, the farmer's market on August 10th from 4 p.m. to 6 p.m. We have music by the House Cats. And do not show up early because we will not play early. <laughs> no. But I'll have our, our sweet new uh, speaker set up. Uh, the surround sound. We're going to play some tunes like we're doing right now. Yeah. It's going to sound real legit. <laughs> That's good. I'm, we need that. Thanks to sure. that grant we got. Got to love them grants. I got to make everything sound and look legit. <laughs> Next thing is we got uh, Appalachian Folk Nights, which the Settlement School and the Appalachian Art Centers are putting on. Uh, the evening includes a free meal of traditional Appalachian fare. I think they'll have some uh, 
biscuits and gravy. Oh, I sure hope so. I'll be there. And craft demonstrations and a beginner-friendly square dance. The event is held at the Art Station in downtown Hazard beginning at 6.30, and the dances start at 7 on August 18th, and on September 22nd is the next two scheduled ones. And you best believe I'm going to be getting flexible <laughs> these uh, these yoga nights. So we're having yoga nights on August 17th, 24th, and the 31st in the Great Hall here on campus. And those begin at 530. And you can join Stephanie Waddles from Studio B as she leads in a gentle hour of yoga for all ability levels. And there were, were all abilities. We had uh, some students from the dyslexia program. Uh, Ola was there, myself and Josh and... Uh, they, a lot of people assume that I was a professional because of my <laughs> flexibility, and I am not. I guarantee you that. Yeah. I just, I'm just a bendy guy. I, guess. I tried stretching this morning; it didn't go well. Yeah, I can't bend my knees to save my life. But <laughs> would you say it's a gentle hour? Is it gentle? It is relaxing. You will leave absolutely reinvigorated, and it is. It's nice. I just felt so chill. I felt like I could melt through the floor cracks. So I feel like stretching would not be gentle. It's painful. It's it's really just the breathing. You'll but I'll let I'll let Stephanie tell you all about that breathing. Yeah, for sure. And lastly, we have uh, East Kentucky Shape Note Sings that are held every second Sunday of the month, except for August. Not August, but not August. Don't I think there up. is one in August, but don't. Uh, but Sarah Kay didn't tell me what day it was on this in her email. So so don't show up August. I guess don't show up the second Sunday in August because nobody will be here. But those happened. Uh, on the second Sunday of every other month, from 2 to 5 p.m. in the Great Hall here on campus. And please contact Sarah Kate Morgan for more information at sarah at hyman.org. And as always, we want to give a, a shout-out to all of our donors and recognize them for their contributions here to the Settlement School. And we have our uh, annual Hyman Day at the Races coming up in October I think October. Uh, don't ask me questions because I don't know the answer. I feel like it's usually like the seventeenth and eighteenth, but I think it's different this year. Uh, but that, yeah, you'll you'll figure that out uh, through other means. <laughs> you'll figure uh, it out. <laughs> Good luck. What What I need to tell you is the wonderful people who have sponsored our Hyman Day at the Races event. And uh, first off, we have Fork Bank, who uh, is our presenting sponsor at ten thousand dollars. Uh, for that day and also Appalachian Wireless came in at $500 and Lee Smith for 250 so thank you all for your contributions to our Hyman Day at the Races event always a fun time and those tickets are now on sale if you would like to grab them depending um, on when this episode goes out it'll so go I'm, out on Monday oh this Monday yep, so same day the tickets go on sale oh looky there same Monday <laughs> so that will be the ninth yep for, so for Wondering. So those will be on sale, and I would grab them up quick because I think we might have less seats this year. They're less doing seats, something, doing something demand. weird in the Lexington room there. It's, so it's you're a little limited, more socially distanced. Very limited seating. So pick those up now. And uh, we also got a donation from the Berea College Appalachia Fund, and that finished up the second half of funding our summer school for $19,000. Thank you, Berea College you. Appalachian Fund. And we also got a charitable donation from Miss Melissa Ruddick. So thank you, Melissa. Yes, and thank you for anyone else who may have donated in the past couple of weeks that we might not have mentioned here. Um, and we thank you all so much for listening and hope you enjoyed this lovely conversation with Miss Gail Young. It always is a... Always a delight. Always a delight. For sure. She's a treasure, a gem. All right. Thank you all so much and goodbye. Oh, wait, I'm Corey Terry. Oh, and I'm Jordan Collins. Goodbye. I have one more thing to say, though. Okay. So, these <laughs> mugs are very good. You're because, welcome. Because I, I pointed you to this brand. Well, then you also get the, the get the credit for this burning the crap out of my mouth right when I, right when I took my tea out. Because I'm like, oh, it should be cold by now. But no, it is still boiling hot. <laughs> and I How burned my lid. For the whole podcast about an hour a little bit before but it, it'd been like 10 15 minutes and solid I was like, mug yeah but you did spill it earlier i did spill it and so I, that's that seems bad but as soon as i put it up to my mouth i was like there's it oh, again. there's two there's oh wow six. i'm gonna kill it here live on the show no nope, we got it not. i'm sure you'll see in the episode but we got attacked by flies like the entire time and that did nothing i tried okay we should end this now yeah we're just rambling it's kind of fun though yeah it's fun yeah
We'll just you want to keep, like, keep going? No, nah, we'll just roll on this. This is fine. Is it still recording? Yes, yeah, still recording. All right. Well, let's kill this. All right. I'm Jordan. <laughs> I'm Jordan Collins, and I'm Corey Terry. That was backwards. Bye. Adios. The Heinemann Cast is brought to you by the faithful and generous supporters of the Heinemann Settlement School. For over 100 years, we've been celebrating heritage and changing lives in Central Appalachia. If you're interested in supporting the work of Heinemann Settlement School, you can go to our website at www.heinemann.org, or you can follow us on Facebook and Instagram at the handle at Heinemann School.